Hi and welcome to the Extrude tutorial. In this video, we're gonna go over the basic use of all the features of the plugin. We're not gonna to go too in depth. We'll have separate videos specifically for text layers, one specifically for mask paths and shape layers, and then one for 3D extrusion. Here in After Effects, we have three separate layers. We have a text layer, we have a solid layer, so you command Y to make a solid, and it's just got two masks applied to it, and we have a shape layer. So the difference is, if we copy extrude here, mask modes work, so for example, if we set it to none, we don't get any subtraction there. These paths are intersecting, and we also have a shape layer, but if we apply it to the shape layer, we'll see nothing happens here. So why is that? Once you've defined the shape the way you want it, say polystar, and I want it eight points, we need to convert that to a Bezier path, otherwise we can't extrude it. The plugin doesn't have access to the vertices. The main difference between shape layers and masks is that by default, if you add a solid, it's not set to continuously rasterize. And that can be a problem because if we scale the layer down, we can see that the width of the stroke has also been scaled down, which you probably don't want. And inversely, if the layer was larger, you can see here that we've actually scaled it up and we're not receiving very sharp outlines here. But if the layer is always continuously rasterized, then we receive perfect anti-alias lines and also our extreme extrusion length is normalized to the world space, not the layer space. Now let's go over the different modes we have. We have the default is directional. All the extrusion lines are parallel. They never converge. And the extrusion is defined by an angle here. Very easy to control. The length is defined in pixels and there's a front and back there. Compare that to vanishing. Instead of an angle slider, we now have a vanishing point control. We can choose where we want that to be and the lines will converge at that point. Notice the extrusion is now measured as a percentage where 100% meets the vanishing point and then negative just goes backwards. Compare vanishing to 3D. In the 3D mode, we vanish towards the center of the camera. Now you might think we don't have a camera here. After Effects always has a camera. It has the default camera. You just can't see it if you don't have a camera layer. And you can see that we can move the layer around and it will converge towards the center of the camera. Now the layer itself is 2D. We can't do 3D transforms to it. If we want to, we come down to 3D transform set up a parent null, and then we could say, rotate that in 3D space. If you had multiple layers that you wanted to rotate, you'd probably be better off making a camera and just rotating the camera if you wanted all their transforms to be the same. But we go over these things in depth in the 3D tutorial. In 3D, the extrusion is also measured as pixels. Back to directional, and you might be wondering, why do we have an extrusion length front and back? So if both these values are zero, we get no extrusion. And at the default of 50 pixels, when we rotate this, you'll notice that it's the extrusion itself rotating, not the source layer. However, if we did the extrusion length front to be the inverse of the back, now when we rotate, we see that it's rotating about the center of the extrusion. And if we did the exact opposite, we would now see that the extrusion is anchored, but the text is rotating. Separating the extrusion into two parameters gives you complete control over the style that you're trying to achieve. We can also do an inner extrude here. So it's a checkbox and then we can define how deep we want that extrusion to be. Something fun we can do with that is apply an expression to the inner extrude. And we can say, if the extrusion length front is greater than zero, then we want it to be an inner extrude. Otherwise we don't. And then that won't make any difference at the moment because the extrusion is negative. But as soon as it becomes positive, the inner extrusion is triggered. And when it's negative, it's not. This expression allows you to do seamless transitions between outer and inner extrude. Come down to stroke width here. We can set the width of the stroke. You'll notice if you set this to zero, we're getting some alias text that the stroke covers up. Come down to quality here and we can increase that. And that removes all the jaggies that we get. We get a nice smooth result. You don't have to draw strokes. This might be a nice way to get a flat long shadow look. And you can also define the stroke opacity as well as the width. Down to fill color here. So by default, you'll inherit the layer's color. And uh, so if the layer's color was different, it would be inheriting that color, or you can define it here with the front fill color. Then we have the side fill color. That could be something different. And you have fill opacity. So we could just render this transparently. We also have the option of doing gradient and I'll just increase the fill opacity back up. So gradient is sort of a color wheel here. We have three different points, three different colors. You can add up to 32 points. You can rotate these points, you can change the color. You can remove the interpolation so that it's sort of flat shading and then you can globally offset the colors. So very powerful, double click to change the color, drag to remove, pretty straightforward. 
Coming down to compositing, and there's only one parameter here, it's the input opacity. By default, this is zero. You probably won't need to change it that often, but it is useful for compositing multiple copies of the effect on top of itself. So if we just increase that to 100, we'll see we're clashing with the stroke because the input buffer is being placed atop that. But what it is useful for is just say we had this extrusion and it was 50 pixels. Then we had a second copy Anything that we do to this original copy is just discarded. The only way we can get that back is by increasing the input opacity. What we could do is make the front copy longer. And because it's being composited behind the original, uh, we can now create an effect where we have multiple segments. Note that this doesn't work the other way around. So if this was the shorter one and the back one was longer, we only get to see one segment because the front segment is actually behind the back segment. Last but not least, we have corner angle threshold in the quality tab. This threshold defines at what angle do we consider it a corner? So we can see we have a corner here, we have a corner here, but we don't have corners on the Y. If we lower this threshold, then these are now considered corners. Whereas if we increase this to its max value of 180 degrees, we aren't getting many corners at all. So this allows you to choose basically how busy you want your extrusion to look. If you have a font, say Comic Sans, this matters a lot more because there's more potential for more corners to be drawn. But at the default, it's pretty good. You just may want to tweak that depending on, oh, I don't want this particular edge to be considered a corner or not. One last thing is motion blur. The plugin itself does not generate any motion blur. So for example, if we wanted to have this text transition in and come in really quickly from here, I'll just apply an expression to that with ease and whiz so it happens really quickly. We'll see, we don't get motion blur. You can turn motion blur on the layer, nothing's gonna happen, uh, but we can render motion blur very easily. We just need to apply CC force motion blur on top. The default of eight samples is probably enough for small motion blur, but because we're doing an exponential ramp here, you may need to increase that to say 32. And that's how you do motion blur. So that's it for the general overview of the plugin, but we also have other video tutorials specifically diving deep into the specifics of text layers, shape layers, and the 3D extrusion mode. Other than that, I hope you enjoy using Extrude.